I can say without a doubt, this adventure is shaping up to be one of, if not the best RPG I've ever played. It's the modern Baldur D&D game you've been waiting for. And for me, as a non-D&D fan, it's another type of, yep, Larian has done it again type situation. Baldur's Gate 3 is out. This is absolutely a generational game. It is the culmination of a interesting and fairly- If you're looking for integrity, uh, ingenuity, creativity, uh, there has never been a better time for indie gaming than right now. So praise after praise after praise is all we see when it comes to Baldur's Gate 3. I always wonder if everyone's opinion is just an opinion stemming from larger or more influential influences, or do people actually play before making an opinion? But I digress. If you've been online for the last three days, you've seen it. Hundreds of thousands of players playing and even more watching across many platforms. A game revered and arguably more hotter than Diablo 4 when it released. But I'm not so easily impressed or impressionable, so I've taken matters into my own hand to reveal the truth of Baldur's Gate 3 Frenzy and expose the game for what it truly is. But before we can expose Baldur's Gate 3 for what it truly is, we need to know what Baldur's Gate 3 is. So the game is Larian Studios newest CRPG and a follow up to BioWare's Baldur's Gate series from many decades ago. Now Larian Studios should be fairly familiar as they have recently made many games like the beloved Divinity and Divinity 2 Original Sins. And now with a D&D setting, they bring us Baldur's Gate 3. You have access to multiple races, including all the classics from D&D, from the human to the elf, half elves and all the elf variants. Don't forget about all the little people with the dwarf, gnomes and halflings, and even some of the most interesting classes like the dragonborn and the orc. Excuse me, I mean the half orc because apparently no one wants a full orc on their team. Like most CRPGs, you have access to many classes offering a variety of playstyles. The rage filled warrior like the barbarian, the Star Wars lay on hand paladin, to the deadly ranger that's in tune with nature's fighters, spellcasters ranging from pack wielding warlocks and well prepared wizards. I think you get it. You have all the classes that any player of the D&D or CRPG gameplay would enjoy. On top of this, you have access to a plethora of origin characters. If you're not interested in making your own story but playing someone else's, you actually can. Without spoiling anything, I will say the Dark Urge and Shadow Hearts origin playstyle is rather unique and has a new perspective on how the game is played. Now obviously classes and races are not enough to make a game get the praise that Boulder Skate 3 has received, so let's take a closer look at the gameplay. Gameplay wise, one thing that makes me and many other players like me hate RPGs are the stupid kill and collect quests. These meaningless go here and do that quests that can be found in many modern games. And to be quite frank, they offer mind numbing content. Fortunately, Boulder Skate 3 takes a different approach to this gameplay. While it definitely has the feel of kill and collect style gameplay, it actually does things quite differently. First and most importantly, while side quests in a lot of RPGs are meaningless, Boulder Skate 3 side quests actually matter. Killing an NPC can actually have an effect on the outcome of the story, and helping a NPC you find during a side quest can make them show up later, further pushing certain storylines. Not to mention, the side quests in Baldur's Gate aren't just afterthought, they can actually have intriguing storylines. To be quite frank, the hack story quest was quite interesting and even better than some of the MSQ in the game. Nowadays, it's common for exploration to be unrewarding and underwhelming in many games. However, one thing I and many other players enjoy is not just sticking with the main story, but also exploring and living in the game world. There are mountains of predicaments where players find themselves in insane storylines that has nothing to do with the main quest. They might have gone there just to look around, but by the time it's all said and done, two hours have gone by and they found powerful or mysterious items. RPGs are known for their stories and some are not good while others are amazing. In my opinion, Boulder Skate 3 has masterfully told a story that is second to none. As I mentioned earlier about the side quests, they are immersive and have their own slice of the world, but the main narrative keeps you enthralled the whole time. On a quick side note, I want to praise Amelia Tyler for her amazing job as the narrator of the game. Surprisingly, I haven't seen a single video talking about the phenomenal job she did with Boulder Skate 3, and I genuinely believe it was probably one of the most outstanding performances for a narrator in any game. Now, back to my main point, the game tells an amazing story, but most importantly, it tells multiple stories, not just from the character you create or play, or the origin characters, but from each playthrough. I played the early access version of the game, which I bought back in like 2019 or 2020. I can tell you this, 
Not a single time have any of my playthroughs been exactly the same. Even if I play the same exact character and think exactly the same way, I can expect a completely different experience from each playthrough. To me, that's pretty important because while I do adore the CRPG genre, the idea of playing the exact same playthrough tends to turn me off from the long haul of the game. The replayability of the game is phenomenal and it keeps me coming back for more. Now we've seen it review after review after review calling Baldur's Gate 3 a generational masterpiece of a game and the new standard in CRPGs. You know, I always find it funny to see this because deep down we know this simply isn't true. Yes, Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that, in my opinion, has done an amazing job at creating a product for the people. A robust character creator, many classes to choose from, an in-depth story with thousands of possibilities and characters to interact with, which arguably the most important aspect for me, no in-game microtransactions, and just a game in its true form. As much as I hate praising games for not being greedy, we sadly live in a time where just buying a product is not enough. The battle passes, the MTXs, the paid expansions, that was just basically the game, but that was released for more money later. And of course, the in-game skips. Oh, I love the in-game skips. But yes, Baldur's Gate 3 isn't greedy. They did what they set out to do, and they made a game for the people who wanted to play it, and based on their numbers, it is wildly successful. That's not to say that other games will follow this trend. Baldur's Gate 3's success will never stop the greed of some when it comes to money. To be quite frank, while you and I hate the idea of paying for power, there are probably five others out there who do want those things. Some people, like that guy that have five kids, 12 jobs, and only 30 seconds a day to commit to gaming, have long been convinced that paying to skip parts of the game is worth it. It's a strange phenomenon that I still can't quite wrap my brain around, but I digress. The point is, Larian Studios, you deserve a pat on the back. You chose integrity over profit, and for that, regardless of how I feel about praising people for doing the right thing, I have to give it to you. Great work, you earned a lifelong customer. Now, I have not seen anyone praise this, and I want to bring it up. One thing that I love, and I mean absolutely love about the game, is nothing to do with the content in the game, but how Larian Studios handled the launch. These last few years, we've seen a shift in gaming where a handful of big creators get their hands on the game, play it for many days before even the early access to the game. And I'm not talking about some superficial reviewer who someone writes a silly review after playing for 10 seconds and giving it a five star rating in a magazine. No, I'm talking about 10 day early access to a handful of creators who played the game for an insane amount of time, even no life in the game. We saw this recently with Diablo 4, where every bit of the game was showcased on YouTube long before the official release date of the game. So I appreciate how Larian Studios took a different approach. They seem to value the player experience and the surprise of playing a new game and didn't spoil everything by giving early access to a few creators. It's refreshing to see a developer prioritize the joy of discovery for the player instead of maximizing pre-launch exposure. I'm still a bit sour from a creator in a player perspective from the Diablo 4 launch. It's a pathetic excuse for a launch if you ask me, but I digress. Larian Studios have had many, many creators who have been covering this game for many, many years. And while they have given those guys some early builds to try out some of the reworked areas or menus we've already seen, for the most part, the entire game is slowly being discovered by the player. Now, as a content creator, I honestly appreciate that. When you limit the access to a handful of creators, you only marginalize the many other creators who probably already struggle with content and views as it is especially in this saturated market. But most importantly, it sours the experience for the player. Because at my core, while I do make content as a job, I actually enjoy playing these games and it sucks when everything is figured out. Again, Larian Studios, another pat on the back for letting the players play the damn game and discover it without everything figured out. Now, I've kissed the devs as enough in this video. I think you guys get the point. Baldur's Gate 3 is doing amazing things. It's a praise after praise after praise of Boulder Skate 3 justified. If you were to ask me, a neutral party who only gets their opinion from the perspective of my experience and not anyone else's, I will say yes. The game lives up to the hype. This isn't one of those no man buy or cyber junk stories where the game is hyped by the creators for the sake of views, but quite the opposite. The views are hyped up by the quality of the game, the studio, and most importantly, the love put into the game. While I don't think the game will set a new standard in RPGs or gaming for that matter, I do think the game is one of the best games of the year and I would argue one of the best of the decade. 
Will the game be something every single player enjoy? Probably not. If you don't like the CRPG genre or the turn-based mode, you're, you're just not going to like it. But when it comes down to a solid quality game, Laurian Studios have outdone themselves with Baldur's Gate 3. That is my opinion, whatever you want to call it, of Baldur's Gate 3. It's pretty safe to say I would personally recommend the game. But with that said, I want to thank you for watching the video. If you do like the content that you did see here today, leave a like as well as subscribe to the channel. This video took a lot of time to edit. So, you know, your support means a lot. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Later.